Okay, so you know a thought on these on these problems we're having with certain satellites, even Direct TV. Okay, is we're at seller maximum right now, and live signals are having an issue because there's damage with the satellites. Um, I have a recorded football game and the artifacts are there. And now it goes into a commercial break and the artifacts are almost gone. They're, all, they're, they're almost not visible. And then the live programming comes back on and it's much more visible. This is something coming from the satellites that's not being not playing nice with the projectors. This is something they'll be able to fix with software in the future, I think. Um, but, you know, the satellites get damaged constantly. It's a rather harsh environment, okay, when it comes to radiation. So, and again, we're at solar maximum right now. I couldn't believe how many satellites Elon had lost out of the constellation. I think it was like 50 or 60. Maybe, maybe like 100 or 150 instead of 50 satellites he lost. Um, it doesn't take much friction to get them to drop down into the atmosphere and then they burn up. Um, hmm. Yeah, satellites. Uh, pretty scary subject, actually. When you, when you understand that these systems aren't infallible, and that they lose control of them all the time. They die, and you're you're kind of fucked. They uh, they don't really have any way of you know controlling them. They're in Neo, and there's a lot of shit in there right now, especially after Irid the Iridium Cosmos collision caused large debris. Clouds and, and I think that those are some of the that is what is causing some of these other issues. So we've had two more happen, or two more satellites collided, and I always think about the Kessler syndrome. So I saw a YouTube video about it the other day. Alex Hollings did one, and I think you know, fifteen years ago when I was talking about it. No one really knew what it was. Um, 15 years ago, space was dirty, crowded then too, but not like it is now. And it, yeah, uh, the, the, the attitude was the big sky attitude with satellites. And that, um, that turned out to be wrong. The big sky, you know, view of space. Yeah, it's only good for so much. You talk about putting 30,000 satellites in a constellation in near Earth orbit that are all in these crisscrossing weird orbits, you know, so that they get coverage on the planet. And the way the planet rotates and, and wobbles. Uh, and then Sam, Amazon, they want to put 30,000 in space. And I'm thinking, you know, we, we, we really need to have a little more, uh, we need to have a more stringent conversation about this. I've had, I've seen numerous problems with satellite issues, not like these artifacts that I'm seeing, but other weird things like, like dual picture on picture kind of thing. Okay? that I shouldn't be receiving because, well, it's not a digital projector. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not picking up the signal that's being broadcast. Yeah, kind of scary, actually, because it shows you they're not infallible. We have problems with them all the time. Again, Elon lost a shit ton of them. It was either 50 or 150. And it's just not, it's not something we can have happen. And when they did the calculations of, it, it came out to 
not if, but when. They, they gave it, they, they told the computer to give them an answer of either that it could happen or that it would happen, and it said it would happen. It just didn't say when, because they didn't ask it. But that was the progression of satellite launches that they calculated then. Now the rate is so much higher, you'd have to plug that back into the formula at a new value. Which means, yeah, it's going to happen. So we need, you know, I've always said they need the deorbiting uh, capabilities, guaranteed deorbiting capabilities. Even if it's like a manual something over time where, you know, it kicks out some kind of a drag device, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, you know, I'm seeing some small artifacts. So this is, this would be maybe direct TV satellite. And if I went to live programming, it wouldn't be there. Certain colors like green, right, right now the screen is green with grass. I can't see the artifacts because of the color they are. It's very specific. These, these defects are very specific and in specific locations, which tells me that, okay, so you had a hyperactive particle go through this chip. You know, it, it damaged these components and now it's basically producing these artifacts and the projectors are sensitive to them. That's what it is. The DLP chip and the projectors are sensitive to that and they show that whereas it doesn't show up on normal televisions. That's kind of the theory that I've developed, okay? Because it doesn't happen with normal televisions, it happens with projectors the AWOL vision anyway, okay? And I think it's because of the tri-laser setup and the chips are very accurate. And in a way it hurts them because the chip is reproducing exactly what it's being told to reproduce. And it's doing it in perfection. The little ziggy, zaggy, zaggy, you could overlay those if you needed to, see? This isn't an unintentional, you got a short somewhere kind of a thing, this is, no, that I think the projector is projecting exactly what it's being told to project. That's what I think. So, it, I think it's a combo. It is. It has to be a combo between the satellites, the base stations, and the the software and the projector. It has to be. <laughs> this one would drive Sherlock Holmes crazy. You know what I mean? I think there was an episode where he was trying to. The Turin test, he, he was trying to, to uh, determine if this computer was sentient <laughs> and how it drove him crazy. It's, logic takes you down certain roads that you can't escape, okay? If it doesn't, sh if this, if, if I take this and unplug it and plug it into this TV back here and there's no defects, then it, okay, so it's only happening with the projectors because it doesn't happen. It's the same recording, but this TV is not capable of reproducing that defect. The projector is because of the tri-lasers and the DLP chip. So a, a, being accurate and being able to interpret every little tiny thing is sometimes not a good thing. And in this case with the projector, okay, it's doing such a good job of reproducing their, the defects that it's saying, is that, you know, it's just doing a good job. Kind of weird, huh? So it's not, I, I don't think it's fixable. I don't think that they'll be able to take this 3500 and make it compatible with those signals. And if that is the case, I'm okay with it. I'll live with it, okay? Because it doesn't show up bad on all the time on anything else that I use. No, no, no big deal, okay? Uh, what I get in return is more than enough to pay for that little inconvenience. Same thing with flipping the to HDMI port one two three to get one to work. I can I can if that's part of the procedure of turning it on and it's not hurting anything. Hey. Gung ho, I'm all for it. I don't have any problems doing that. Okay, it's, there's no work, it's no effort. And again, I still get my beautiful end product. 
but when the remote, when it comes on and it's at, in its home base and it's in a scattered type thing moving and the, and the remote control will answer, that's why it's going back. I want to be clear. That's the only reason it's going back for repair or replace is because that's something wrong there. That's not, that's not supposed to happen. Okay. And it's done it twice. Um, I was hoping I'm doing a little experiments when I shut it off. I'm trying to leave it on certain inputs when I turn it off to see if that makes a difference. And I don't know, I don't have enough data at this point to determine what it is. It hasn't failed on me enough times during my experience to give me any kind of conclusion. So, <sighs> so I got one serious problem and the rest of it, I think I've figured out that it's just that it's something that's not going to be able to be fixed that we're gonna to have to live with that aspect of having this model, you know? I don't know if they'll fix it with future models, if they can, I don't know, but um, yeah. Hmm. It's a shame too, it really is a shame. And I don't want them to feel bad about having to repair or replace a second one. Uh, and that they picked me, the guy who was going to be <laughs> all over it. But anybody would. Nobody's going to be able to, no one's going to want to watch the artifacts on there. You know what I mean? Regardless. If they just have a TV and they don't have to bother with it and they don't have to see it, they're not going to want to buy a projector. You know what I mean? So they're going to have to address it in, in some way. And that's what I, I'm thinking maybe that's why we have the new pro model. 3000 with the same kind of lumens this one has as the LTB 3500. See? So maybe they are fixing things. <laughs>